This class in particular was an online asynchronous uh, first year writing course. Um, I wanted to show you this uh, as opposed to any of the other Canvas courses I've created um, because I think it gives you a really good idea of how robust uh, my instructions are and how structured the course is uh, for first year and early, you know, early career students um, who really need a lot of structure and a lot of uh, explanation. So this is the main page, and you'll notice up here that I have recent announcements. Uh, they can always be visible as soon as a student logs on to the page. I have um, a segment here uh, in the page that has my contact information, uh, a fun little GIF here that has some motion to sort of attract the eye, uh, a bit of overview information here about what the content of the course is and some key things that students will want to keep in mind as they um, are working through the course. Uh, students will also see here in the to-do list um, all of the things that are upcoming. Uh, I do use the uh, um, to-do feature and due date features. I use the calendar uh, feature pretty, pretty regularly. Um, and if I have time in this video, I'll add a section where I show you what this course looked like with all of its due dates in the um, calendar space setup. So, uh, so this is what the homepage looks like here. I've got some introductory information here, and then I have a list of all of the modules um, together with a, an open Q&A section, introduction to the course, and then the major assignments. And then outside of that, everything goes along in weekly modules. Um, this is week five that we're on currently, hypothetically, and uh, you can see here that I've organized each module according to first half of the week and second half of the week. And each week also has an overview of their readings and assignments. So the overview of the readings and assignments um, explains why, what we're doing and why we're doing it, how it fits into the larger um, goals of the course, uh, and then another way to access materials from the first and the second part of the week. Okay. Uh, so every single module has something like this. What are we doing this week? and what are the things you need to do to be successful in this module. I've also made the habit of um, you know, incorporating fun things like these padlets where students can introduce themselves uh, with a picture to their peers because uh, this is an asynchronous course and uh, you know they, they need to have a place to feel like they are part of a community. So, uh, so I like to have this um, introductory padlet up for the first part of the term and then at midterm I'll set up another padlet uh, where students get to talk a little bit about what they're proud of having accomplished at midterm. So this is how I set up the main page in terms of content, but I also wanted to draw your attention to the navigation panel here on the left-hand side. You'll notice that it's very brief. Um, students do not have access to the assignments uh, link, uh, and they don't have access to a number of other links like the discussion links. And I remove these deliberately so that students don't get confused because inevitably, in my experience, students want to go to the assignments link to find their assignments. And um, unless students know how to organize all of uh, their assignments into uh, a particular view, that it just can become very overwhelming. Okay. Um, so, you know, normally it's this sort of giant thing and students don't even see them on, by default um, in their their weights. Okay. So, um, you know, I usually use weighted uh, assignments um, and I understand that, but students will not default to this screen. Most students default to just kind of, um, you know, a, a mishmash of all of the different projects that are there. And then they can sort and group them, of course, but uh, can search for things. But infrequently, uh, students are, um, are capable of doing that, especially first year students. It's just not something that occurs to them. So I do spend a lot of time talking with students about how to use the what if grades. Um, and I show them how to sort of read these kinds of pages because it, inevitably students have a difficult time understanding weighted grades um, and, uh, and especially in an asynchronous class where every sort of little thing frequently has an assignment or grade associated with it, they can get easily overwhelmed. So I show students how weights work and I encourage them to use what if grades so that they can see, um, you know, how their overall score uh, will change if they decide not to turn something in and instead of 
and, and instead of say a 10 right out of 25 or 20 out of 25 they don't turn it in they get a zero so they can see how their grade changes uh, okay, so um, one of the things that I do as well in the beginning of every class is I prepare uh, an, uh, a video overview of how the course is set up so that students know how to use Canvas effectively, how to find things in Canvas, and so on. Um, and I put these up on YouTube usually with a private um, link, so only those with the link can access it. Uh, and I do this because um, YouTube has pretty good closed captioning. Uh, and um, and that is, I think, important for accessibility. I've set up the course according to weekly modules, and I will um, expand them all so you can kind of see what this looks like. Uh, so we have a module for the open Q&A. We have a module for introduction to the course. Um, uh, and then we go week by week, uh, diagnostic writing, rhetorical analysis, um, audience thesis and outline, source use, rhetorical analysis, uh, project is due, response writing, which is the second major project in the class, um, response writing and workshopping for that project, the midterm exam, And I also have another module down here that has all of the major assignments. Uh, these major assignments are, of course, also, um, you know, in each of the modules uh, that, you know, where they normally would occur. Um, and I do this so that, as I mentioned earlier, students can, uh, can have access to those major projects. They can see what's going on in those major projects, um, uh, even though they haven't kind of uh, come upon them yet. One of the things I really like to focus on when I'm doing discussion boards is uh, very specific kinds of responses that I'm asking for students to reply to their peers with. So students in this discussion board post have been asked to put their revised research question and their working thesis and outline. Um, and I've given them again a video that I've used to model how students can outline. Um, and lots of links for them to help kind of produce this, this work. Um, and then I've asked them to reply to two peers and specifically what I'm looking for them to do in their replies are offer a suggestion to revise a thesis and one suggestion to help structure the outline. So I like to add very concrete um, suggestions for students in terms of how they can and should be responding to their peers because this helps um, when we get to the more robust peer review section of the course. Uh, and so, let's see. Um, here's an example of um, one suggestion that a student, um, that a student gave. Um, and again, uh, making the counterclaim more argumentative and maybe um, adding your own experience into the structure. So I found that um, providing these kinds of very concrete uh, instructions around responses to the discussion board help students feel that the discussion boards are not simply uh, busy work, but that they can get some good advice from them. Um, and this is something that I try to, you know, embed in, in my classes, especially lower level classes, uh, so that students as they grow uh, can really appreciate the, uh, the workshopping process and the peer review and the critique process. Um, and they can become better at it themselves. So I do use discussions quite a bit, uh, and this is just one sort of example of how I do that. I want to show you how I set up activities for my students. Um, one thing that I do wish uh, were possible in Canvas is for quizzes to not be identified as quizzes, but rather as activities or quizzes. Um, so for instance, um, this is a refresher of material that we've learned at the beginning and second and, and the first half of the term um, on how to identify bias in writing, how to identify types of writing, and so on. You can see here um, that I've got a content warning about the content of the, 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 the activity, um, instructions, and uh, kind of key elements highlighted um, to draw their attention. In this case, what I'm trying to help students see is um, how to distinguish between different kinds of writing and how to identify uh, bias and other 
uh, key elements of information literacy. So for instance, here is a screen grab of uh, an, uh, a website and uh, students need to use their prior knowledge and their examination of the image to determine that this is a national newspaper article. So what is this? Um, and then I asked them, how strong do you think the bias is in this article? Uh, we have here a Kaiser Permanente webpage, which is uh, an advertisement. And if you look closely at the image, you can, you can see that, for instance, it clearly reads here, view full size ad. Uh, and then they have a last question here, which is which of these pieces do students think would be most appropriate for a college level research essay using popular sources? Um, and then I give them a little bit of guidance. So which of these that they've seen above um, would be the most appropriate? And it's this one from the Washington Post. Uh, and then they have to explain why they chose this source. Okay, uh, I also want to show you how I set up um, reading assignments. So I use Hypothesis to have students read and conduct active reading and annotation on the materials that I'm asking them to read. So I give them some um, criteria here, what I'm looking for. So uh, when we take a look, um, this is what it looks like. Uh, and you can see that I've got students here working in small groups so that, um, you know, they can see each other's ideas and comments. Okay. And uh, the goal here is that students become stronger, active readers. Um, so that's just a brief overview of how I would set up uh, an online asynchronous course in Canvas. And uh, I hope you found it useful.